Hello! This is the Bible in fewer words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 272, The Acts of the Apostles, chapters 8 and 9. Hi, Steve! Hi, Carol. We're going to begin to talk about Saul. Saul Paul. Saul kind of becomes Paul in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. There's a story about him that is really famous. I call this episode The Road to Damascus, a conversion experience. All right. Should we be converted today? Oh, I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) Should we read this story? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Chapter 8. Saul approved of Stephen's stoning. Last time he was watching the clothes of the people who were stoning, not actually participating in the stoning. In this chapter, we're going to learn more about Saul. Okay. And he approved of it. He was there. At that time, there was great persecution of the church. So everyone in the church left Jerusalem except for the apostles. Stephen was buried while Saul arrested church members and threw them in prison. So now I guess Saul is a full-fledged leader of the persecution of the Christians. The uh, priests and Jews have given some authority to... They're, they're rewarding him for having watched their clothes. I guess so. You know, we don't... Well, it sounds like this is just right after, right? Because yeah. they say that they buried Stephen and then Saul is arresting church members and throwing them in prison. Okay. And when we say church members, we mean followers of Jesus. Yeah. They don't use the term Christians. There's a There's a place in the book of Acts that we haven't got to yet where the <laughs> word Christian is first used. Oh, now they call them believers, followers, disciples. Mm-hmm. Isn't the word church kind of funny, though? Church is a strange word. To, yeah. to show up at this stage in the history of Christianity, because there really was no church. No. There were synagogues, <laughs> synagogues and, t- and temples, and but there was no church with buildings, or there was no real organized church. It mm-hmm. was just... Just a bunch of uh, And this is out of the King James followers. Version of the Bible. You didn't put that word in there. Oh, no. The, the Bible, the book of Acts, uses the word church. Okay. Here. So Stephen was buried while Saul arrested church members and threw them in prison. Philip went to Samaria and performed many miracles. Okay. Who's Philip? There's two Philips, unfortunately, as there's going to be two of a lot of different characters uh-huh. two here Saul's. with the same name. Yeah. And since they only have a first name, it's all very confusing, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this Philip is not Philip the Apostle. He was one of the seven they selected to serve tables. Okay. So Philip went to Samaria and performed many miracles. And the people believed him because of them, because of the miracles he performed. Right. Unclean spirits screamed as they came out of possessed people. And many who were sick or lame were healed. Huh, so I just want to note here that Philip should be serving widows, and he's out now performing miracles. Did he get promoted you know, or something? I think that whole serving widows and, and serving tables, uh-huh. stuff, there's more to it than that. There are like deacons in the church. Oh, okay. Not that I really know what a deacon does. Well, but you know, you have priests and you have deacons that are sort of... Um, below them. Uh-huh. Okay. But a man named Simon was in Samaria who bewitched the people with sorcery. Everyone said he had great power from God. So this guy who's performing sorcery, Simon. Yes. And Simon is sometimes called Simon the Magician. Oh. But they also believed what Philip said about Jesus. And all the men and women were baptized. And Simon also believed and was baptized. They're adding to their numbers here. Yes, they are. And so Simon was doing all this. He was doing magic, but he also was a believer. Yeah. And he was baptized. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard what was happening in Samaria, they sent Peter and John, who laid their hands on the believers in Samaria, and they received the Holy Ghost. When Simon saw that the Holy Ghost was given in this way, he offered to give them money, saying, Give me this power, so I can give the Holy Ghost to people by laying my hands on them. So Simon was a sorcerer and did magic, and he's probably thinking, hey, this is pretty cool. (laughs) This looks like a pretty good gig. Yes. I'll give you money to teach me how to do Uh that. Yeah. Peter said to him, let your money die with you, because you tried to buy God's gift with money. Simon said to Peter, pray for me so nothing bad happens to me. Yeah, watch it, buddy. (laughs) It could happen any second now. 
This is where the word simony comes from. I'm not sure I heard that word. The sin of simony. It's trying to buy spiritual or religious gifts to get power through money. There's indulgences, which used to be sold by the church. You had to give them some money. So that would be an example of simony. Or it would also be if you had the power to ordain priests Uh and you said, hey, I'll give you a bunch of money if you'll give me some some type of spiritual function that can be purchased with money, that would be simony. Oh. Okay, verse 26. God's angel said to Philip, get up and go to Gaza in the south. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why? Well, <laughs> what, what is so strange to me is that in the book of Acts, uh-huh. you often have angels just saying, Stuff. telling people things. Okay, giving them instruction. Mm-hmm. It's not just that they're inspired by God or whatever. An angel actually comes to them and tells them, get up and go to Gaza. So Philip got up and went to Gaza. On his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch who was reading Isaiah the prophet. The spirit said to Philip, go over to his chariot. So Philip went over and said to the eunuch, do you understand what you're reading? The eunuch said, how can I unless someone explains it to me? Then Philip preached to him about Jesus. As they went along, they passed some water. The eunuch said, here's some water. Why not baptize me? What Philip does here, they read a passage from Isaiah. Mm -hmm. He explains that what Isaiah is talking about here is Jesus, according to the, the New Testament. The Old Testament, it's all about Jesus. So Philip said, okay, if you believe with all your heart. The eunuch said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, that's it. That's all he needs to believe, right? Yep, that's right. So they stopped the chariot, and Philip baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched away Philip, and the eunuch didn't see him anymore. Oh, my gosh. Philip was later found at Azotus. Azotus is a town about 20 miles away. (laughs) So apparently, he just snatched him up. I mean, that's what the Bible says. He was getting beamed by the angel to go to Azotus. Just something about this whole incident with the eunuch. Mm -hmm. Notice that the eunuch was baptized without question, really, once it was clear that he believed in Jesus, right? Yes, yep. Well, people say that that's kind of strange here because he's a eunuch. Uh Uh-huh. Eunuch means various things to various people. (laughs) Well, what some people think it it is about Mm -hmm. is that he might be gay. Oh, yes, he might be gay. Yeah. And And so, so you can't baptize someone who's gay? Well, a lot of people would say maybe you shouldn't because the homosexuality is condemned by the Bible. Christians who support gay rights try to find things in the Bible that they think supports gay rights. Mm-hmm. They often point to this story in Acts yeah. saying that there was a eunuch who might be gay, right? Maybe that's what they meant by eunuch, yeah. who was baptized without question. He didn't say, well, I can't baptize you because you're you're a homosexual, uh-huh. and the Bible condemns homosexuality. In fact, according to Leviticus 2013, I should, I should stone you to you. death. He just said, he didn't sure. correct him. He didn't say, well, you you are, apparently, you seem to be. I'm not sure, but you seem you to be gay. Be. Yes. And if you are homosexual, then you'll have to, you need to understand that that's sinful. And I can't just baptize you with at least explaining that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can't do it unless you renounce that. Anyway. But really, all he asked him is, do you believe? Yes. And so that's the point that many people point to in this story and say, well, the Bible doesn't condemn homosexuality because here, Philip just baptized this guy without question. Yeah. And he knew he was homosexual. Okay. That's how this is used in the um, debate over the Bible and homosexuality. Thank you. Mm Mm-hmm. Chapter 9. Meanwhile, Saul went to the high priests in Jerusalem and asked them for permission to arrest believers there and bring them to Jerusalem. As Saul approached Damascus, a light shined down from heaven. He (laughs) fell down and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul said, Who are you, Lord? The voice said, I'm Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Saul said, what would you like me to do? The voice said, get up and go to the city. You'll be told what to do. 
The men with Saul didn't say anything. They heard the voice, but didn't see anyone. A light shined down from heaven. It doesn't really say that he saw the person. He just, it's kind of just a voice, it sounds like. Yeah. Verse 8. When Saul got up, he couldn't see. The men led him by hand into Damascus. Saul was blind for three days. A disciple in Damascus named Ananias heard a voice in a vision that said to him, Get up and go to Judas's house on Straight Street and ask for Saul of Tarsus, who will be praying. Put your hand on him so he can see again. Ananias said, Lord, I've heard about Saul. He's done bad things to the saints in Jerusalem. He has the authority to arrest whoever calls on your name. The voice said, Go ahead and do it. Saul is my chosen vessel to bring my name to the Gentiles, kings, and people of Israel. I'll show him what he'll suffer for my name's sake. Like if he doesn't do what I say? <laughs> no, I think it's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a threat. It's more of a prediction. Bad okay. stuff's going to happen because bad stuff always happens to my followers because uh-huh. it happened to me. You know. All right. So Ananias went to the house, put his hand on Saul, and said, Jesus sent me to help you see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately Saul could see again. Then he stood up and was baptized. Saul stayed in Damascus for a few days, preaching in the synagogues that Christ is the Son of God. Then the Jews decided to kill him. But the disciples helped him escape by lowering him down the wall in a basket. Saul came back to Jerusalem, but the disciples were afraid of him and didn't believe he was a disciple. But Barnabas brought him to the apostles and told them that Saul had seen and talked to Jesus and was now a believer who preached Jesus' name in Damascus. Saul preached in the name of Jesus in Jerusalem and argued with the Greek-speaking Jews, but they tried to kill him. So they sent Saul to Caesarea, and then to Tarsus. So I guess he can only preach certain places, otherwise he's going to get killed. He's kind of getting getting in trouble wherever he goes. Oh. But I guess he's going home, because they said Saul of Tarsus, right? Yeah. Before, and now now he's going to Tarsus. Verse 32. Peter traveled to various places. Then he visited the saints of Lydda, There was a man in Lydda called Aeneas who had been paralyzed for eight years and couldn't walk. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ has cured you. Get up and walk. And he stood up and walked. There was a female disciple in Joppa named Tabitha who was full of good works. She became sick and died. The disciples asked Peter to come to Joppa. When Peter arrived, he said, Tabitha, stand up. And she opened her eyes and stood up. When it became known in Joppa, many people believed in Jesus. Hmm. So, perform a miracle or two. The word will get around and you'll get like a thousand more people. Or the whole town to believe. Yeah, that's right. They must have been pretty charismatic. A charismatic person can really suck you in. Well, the whole thing is is mysterious. I mean, in, in terms of how Christianity took hold. Mm-hmm. It's really amazing that it eventually did. I'm sure that there were many similar religious beliefs that were popular here and there for a little while, but didn't take over and... Catch on. Catch on, yeah. But Christianity definitely did, although it took really about three centuries before, before it did. Mm-hmm. In fact, it's likely that at the time this was written, the number of Christians was very small. And the numbers that you have in Acts are almost certainly exaggerated. But who knows? Yeah. All right. Hey, well, thanks for doing all your work to get this ready for us. One thing that I think we should talk about a little bit, many people that we talk to that listen to the podcast aren't aware that it's available at the skepticseditedbible.com and that I think that's the best place for people to go to to so, listen to our podcast. And when you say Skeptics Annotated Bible, you mean our website. Yes. So it's the, .com. The skepticseditedbible.com. It's a long name. Yes, but put it in your computer one time and then you can just keep going back to it. Right, or bookmark it or whatever. But yeah, it, that's the place to go because all of the podcasts are there and they're all organized so that they're easy to find. 
So if you're interested in the podcast that we did from the book of Leviticus, you can go to the book of Leviticus and on the side you'll see all the podcasts from that book. They're also listed in order from 1 through 272, and you can just select whichever one you want to listen to. There's a lot of ways that it's presented at the website that make it very easy to find and use. Say that you're interested in the current podcast, mm -hmm. the, which is uh, for Acts chapter 8 and 9. Yeah. If you went to the website in chapter 8, you'd see um, the podcast embedded at the very top of the page. So you could just click on that and listen to it. There's also a link that will take you to the actual page for that particular episode. And it has all the words that we're reading from with links to back to the verses in the Bible. The King James Version the of the Bible? The King James Version of the Bible. So they, the could, SAB. they could check and make sure you didn't leave something out. Exactly. They can see what I did leave out. And they can see if I uh, represented the verses that we're reading here mm -hmm. in a reasonable fashion. They can also see down at the bottom, there'll be a bunch of notes that I've attached. And there'll be also illustrations in, in the text as well. You've really gone through a lot of work to put this together, Steve. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, sure. I mean, you can listen to it on any podcast on Apple or Spotify or wherever you get your podcast. YouTube as well. On YouTube, yeah. But in all of those places, you will not be able to see the text that we're actually reading from or have access to the notes that I've attached or links back to the verses of the Bible. You have all that at the SAB. Okay. Yeah. It's complicated to explain, but I think once you go to the skepticsannotatedbible.com, you'll be able to just work through it. I think so. I think you'll be able to sort it out fairly easily once yeah. you get to the website. And if you have any questions, you're always free to email Steve. Steve's email is swwells at gmail.com. Yep. And mine is wells, C-A-R-O, at gmail.com. Okay. Hey, thanks so much, folks, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.